A warm welcome and herzlich willkommen to the Deeper Preview. For those of you who stayed with us on this channel already for the Ligna Outlook, thanks for your patience. And for those of you, obviously, a warm welcome to you as well, who just joined us now, especially for the Deeper Preview. We are streaming live from the Media Factory in Hanover. And welcome to all of you out there. Um, my moderator next to me, Philip Henry, and I, we welcome you today to the digital event of Deep Preview. Before we will officially start into the program of the Digital Printing Association Short Deepa, I would just give you a short warm-up while you only hear me speaking in English right now. So that will change in a second. Our lovely translators um, will provide you with the translation soon in German and in English. But right now we wanted to give you a heads up and let you know why the two of us are starting in different languages. So it will be me taking up the English speaking part today mainly until the rest of the day. And then uh, Philip will take up the German speaking part. So let's dive right into it. Um, my name is Stephanie Wagner, and some of you or most of you might know me in a different role, namely one of the project directors of Ligna. Today I'm here on stage in a quite different role, namely um, as member of the board of DEPA. And next to my fellow member of the board, Philip, on, the, on my left hand side, who will introduce himself shortly in a minute. Um, we will now guide you through the program of the day. So for the next one and a half to two hours, and uh, I hope you will have the chance to listen closely to what we have to say about DIPA. So what we'll, we will present to you today is actually three things. Um, first of all, obviously, we wanted to give you an intro into the topic itself the digital printing topic. So this is what DEPA is actually building up around. Secondly, we will like to inform you about our upcoming DEPA symposium, which will take place uh, late September this year. And third and not last, we will give you some information about DEPA, the association itself, and what we are all about and what our goals and achievements are that we are trying to bring over regarding DEPA. So I hope something there will be in store for you, every, uh, for everybody. And not only the press and the media who's been joining us today, but also for the companies with us today, the company representatives um, from the woodworking industries and the related industries. And last but not least, I hope uh, we have some interested companies today that might be thinking about learning more about DEPA itself and what we stand for. So Philip um, will now get you going on the German part of the story, and then uh, we will directly start into the program, and we'll start with our first two speakers. Ja, vielen Dank, Stephanie. Auch von meiner Seite an die deutschsprachigen Zuschauer ein herzliches Willkommen im Namen der DIPA. Ich bin Philipp Henry, ich bin Projektmanager bei der HOMA Group und auch heute hier als Vorstandsmitglied der DIPA da. Ich freue mich, hier heute Sie auf Deutsch durch das Programm führen zu dürfen, um, hier live aus der Medien, Media Factory in Hannover. Was Sie heute erwartet, was wir Ihnen heute anmoderieren werden, ist eine Art Dreiklang, einen ersten Vorgeschmack auf einen Dreiklang. Einen Dreiklang ähm, zuallererst mal bestehend aus dem Thema an sich, worum es bei der DIPA geht, nämlich dem Digitaldruck rund um unseren Slogan Oberfläche selbst gestalten. Aus dem, was Sie, wie Stefanie schon erwähnt hatte, dann Ende dieses Jahres im Herbst erwarten wird, unser zweites DIPA-Symposium. Und nicht zuletzt, Tauchen wir mal in die Welt der DIPA ab und schauen uns an, wofür denn die DIPA da ist und was die Ziele des Verbandes sind. Wir hoffen dadurch, dass für Sie alle etwas dabei ist, nicht nur für Medien und Presse, sondern auch hauptsächlich für die zuschauenden Firmen unter Ihnen aus der holzverarbeitenden Industrie, aus verwandten Industrien, vielleicht auch aus dem Handwerk und nicht zuletzt den Interessenten unter Ihnen, die vielleicht ein bisschen mehr von der DIPA erfahren möchten. Also nochmal von meiner Seite auch ein herzliches Willkommen und lass uns loslegen, Stephanie. Okay. So let's cut to the core. Uh, our program, as we said, is mainly um, divided into three different parts. The first one being an introduction, an introduction and a short overview in the market situation um, from two perspectives of our next two speakers. The second being um, the views of two users actually working in the field of digital printing, so to say, from scratch on day one. And last but not least, the third part is then being directed at more information about DIPA itself, the association network. 
So during each of the following three parts, you will get the chance to forward questions. Um, so the audience out there, if you have any questions regarding the next two speakers and obviously everybody else coming afterwards, please direct those to you by email. Um, the email address, uh, and we will publish that throughout the course of the deeper preview several times, will be deeper at media minus factory dot studio. So feel free to raise questions and we will forward them to our speakers. So our first guest today um, is providing us with a general introduction into digital printing and how it developed over the years. Lorenzo Villa is actually joining us from the beautiful city of Milano. Lorenzo is the co-founder of Density, a B2B publication. He graduated as print engineer and worked as print production manager followed by working as an editor in publications for the graphics, um, packaging and textile industries. He was co-founder and secretary of the EDP Association and served as management consultant within the industrial inkjet printing market. Today, Lorenzo is involved in the publishing business of density and the production of digital contact for the manufacturing industries. Lorenzo, a warm welcome for us from the stage and we're looking forward to your input and presentation. Welcome to this uh, DIPA preview event. Thanks, Stephanie, for the introduction and uh, thanks the entire uh, DIPA board for the invitation. My name is uh, Lorenzo Villa. I am a print engineer and I worked for many years in printing and packaging, first as a technician, then as an influencer, a consultant, a journalist, and a publisher. I consider myself a print enthusiast. Uh, I love this industry and I'm still fascinated by uh, its development. If uh, Johannes Gutenberg is uh, considered the inventor of uh, printing, uh, an Israeli guy called Benny Landa is considered the father of digital printing. After founding uh, his company, Indigo Digital Press, in uh, 1977, Benny said, uh, everything that can become digital will become digital, and printing is no exception. Needless to say, he was right. But uh, uh, the first issue today is, uh, should we call it digital printing or digital decoration? The <clears throat> biggest uh, distinction is uh, that uh, in graphic communication and also in packaging, Printing is what people sell and buy. In the manufacturing sector, uh, it's different. It is part of a much longer and more complex process. It's about the application of a pattern to a surface, and it is fine to call it decoration. Therefore, no matter how you want to call it, it makes sense for each industry to use its own uh, language. Then, uh, if you want me to tell you how many billion dollars it's worth, how many square meters it counts, what's the CAGR of each segment, I'm not the person. I can do analysis, but uh, I am not an analyst. That's why we have uh, organizations like uh, Smitter Spira, for example, with their analysts who do a great job and update this data periodically. Also, uh, to give you a relevant figure, I should average the dozens of market research carried out by different organizations, each with their own method. Uh, instead, I was lucky enough to experience the evolution of digital printing in the graphics, in the textile, in the packaging, in the many industrial fields over the last two decades. And I played an active role in more than a project of digitization or hybridization. It is crucial to note that not all the markets have adopted digital printing at the same pace and not all run at the same speed. Therefore, it is important to distinguish between the level of penetration of adoption already achieved and the further potential for growth. And of course, the time needed to achieve this. Let me give you a couple of examples. Uh, there are markets, for example, that have adopted digital printing faster and more uh, confidently 
and are already digitized at a significant uh, level. Let's think, for example, about label printing with the thousands of uh, printing companies and dozens of manufacturers involved. At the last uh, Label Expo show in uh, 2019, there were more than 60 exhibitors selling inkjet presses. And in just a few years, the vast majority of label converters worldwide adopted one or more digital press, to the point that it is estimated that 25 to 30% of labels today are already produced digitally. The growth here has been explosive in the last five years, but in the next five, it will probably flatten. In flexible packaging, on the other end, there are huge volumes but the level of digitization is still close to zero. In other markets, such as commercial printing, graphic arts, publishing, digital printing is growing and will grow inexorably, but at a slower pace. And there are many reasons for this. One of the, is that analog technology and light offset technology in particular today is so qualitative, is so efficient that it is slowing down a mass digitization. Let's start with the first example, textile printing, clothes, apparel, sportswear, home textiles. Here, the digital penetration today is maybe 10 to 20%, depending on the application, with a compound annual growth again, close to 20%. That's a lot. But we have to consider that this process started more than 25 years ago. If we take a step back to the 90s, in 95, 96 in Como, Italy, a company called MS, today part of Dover Corporation, had already developed a prototype of a single pass press using HP thermal inkjet heads that was exceeding 30 linear meters per minute. They were pioneers, but it was too early. Then, uh, between uh, 2008 and 9, they stabilized the system, they switched to piezo heads, and they launched the world's first single pass inkjet press in textile. A 1.8 to 3.2 wide, up to 12 colors, running at 100 and 20 linear meter per minute with a four picoliter droplet size. Over the same years, uh, other companies such as Reggiani, which is now part of EFI, Robustelli, which is now part of Epson, and Konica Minolta in Japan were also releasing their own inkjet printers running at 200, 300, 400 square meter per hour. And today, most textile printing companies operate a fleet of 15, 20, 30 units. They run 24 by 7 and they cover the majority of their printed volumes. And for some years now, this system have been also adopted in the Far East to replace a rotary screen. But what are the digital drivers in uh, textiles? The most visible is the unlimited variants and the much higher print quality. And even more important, the faster time to market and the reduction of inventory, the reduction of waste. These are the compelling needs for fashion brands that today are reshoring their production to Europe and North America. Emblematic are uh, the cases of uh, two global fashion brands, H&M and Zara. Excluding the impact of COVID-19 in the last year, we all know that H&M is declining while Zara remains uh, competitive. Why? Because many years ago, they started to reduce the time from design to the garment in the shops from a usual uh, five, six months to just a few weeks. Last but not least, uh, uh, sustainability. The reduction of water, steam, energy for uh, the entire fabric processing and the CO2 emissions for the transport of a uh, garment from the Far East to back to Europe and North America. The second example is uh, corrugated packaging. 
Here, the penetration of digital printing is lower, perhaps uh, 5%. And the growth uh, is uh, maybe 10-15% year on year. Again, uh, we are talking about a development that took uh, a couple of years. Back in the late 90s, I remember in Israel, Aprion Digital built a fully automated inkjet printer for Gorgated, which later became Cytex Vision and then uh, HP. If we just focus on a single pass industrial uh, presses, the Spanish company Barbaran set up its uh, digital print business in 2004 and released the first prototype in 2007. To be fair, their uh, initial goal was to create a system for wood panels, but they triggered the interest of packaging. And uh, they started uh, the first installation in 2014, and today they have uh, several systems running 24 by 7 worldwide. And along them, today, the leading uh, suppliers in the digital corrugated are uh, EFI, HP, and Durst. Well, and uh, what are the drivers in uh, packaging? First of all, the outbreak of e-commerce, of home delivery, and the need to provide the consumers with an amazing unboxing experience. Customization, of course, by geographical area, by language, by seasonality, and also the so-called shelf-ready packaging, when a box becomes a display itself at the point of sale. And uh, yeah, special product editions, for Christmas, for Valentine's Day, for the FIFA World Cup, uh, you know. And uh, yeah, safety, safety and traceability of, uh, of packaging. The third example and the last one is the ceramics market. Here, the adoption rate of uh, digital printing is simply impressive. We are talking about more than 90%. Even in the ceramic world, the inkjet revolution began early in 2000 in Spain with the Ferro, Kerajet, and Creta Print, and also in Italy again with Durst uh, just a few years later, followed shortly by the big Italian ceramic leaders, Intesa, System, Projecta, Sacmi. And uh, 10 years ago, the European market was already largely digitized. And today, uh, it is estimated to be almost fully digitized globally. Why such an explosion? Certainly because uh, ceramics uh, is, more, uh, is a more industrialized, is a more complex industry in the hands of a few giants that led and managed this transformation rapidly. And... Um, what motivated these companies to such an extent? First of all, uh, again, the unlimited design uh, variables, the variance, not only in printing, not only the colors, but also in glazing. Then, uh, what else? A much higher image print quality. The very first inkjet press in ceramics 20 years ago was already three times the quality of rotary screen. It was a small revolution and a much bigger print size. Today we can buy printed ceramic tiles of 1.6 by 3.2 meter in one piece. And this is not just a technical quirk, but a request from customers, from architects, from designers, and uh, the opportunity to print contactless on a rough, on a wrinkled surface, like the, the, the um, ceramic tiles, the ability to print edge to edge without borders. And of course, uh, even in the ceramic market, the higher differentiation, the faster product development and the reduced inventory. The question today is, uh, uh, what's next? What's the next big, big uh, thing? What are the further opportunities for the growth of digital printing? By size, 
it seems to be printed electronics and for a DIPAS, peace of mind, followed by the surface decoration, the decor markets in general. But all the markets we mentioned, packaging, textiles, ceramics, glass, labels, uh, graphic arts, they all have a big, big room for a digital development. After all, we have to think that in many of these markets, digital printing has only scratched the surface. And what are the challenges still to overcome? First of all, adapting, adapting the platform, including the inks, the curing methods, to print on different substrates, on more substrates. Reducing the costs, reducing the running costs, of course, and uh, increasing the speed sometimes, being more sustainable, even more sustainable. But probably the most important is uh, integration, is integrating digital printing with what is upstream and downstream the printing engine across existing production environments. To succeed, uh, however, it is necessary to think at the supply chain level and involve all the counterparts, including brand owners and why not designers in this conversation. After all, uh, they are the ones that have a budget, they, they are the ones that have ideas, and the, my, they, they must be the ones that perceive and recognize the true advantage of digital printing. One thing is clear, we moved out of the can we do or we can do stage into the how can we do it. And the challenge is open and uh, DIPA and uh, its members are in the front line to play this game. Thanks again. Thanks for the invitation. Uh, I wish you a great success for your uh, DIPA preview event and your association. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lorenzo, for your interesting presentation and the insights uh, you gave into the history and development of digital printing. Um, dear audience, as I said before, and I mentioned that, um, please use the email deeper at media-factory.com to raise any questions. Lorenzo will be available uh, together with our next speaker, Karl-Heinz Scholz, who will be coming up in a second. And they both will be available for a Q&A session afterwards. So within the next nine to ten minutes, while the next presentation is taking place, you will still have the chance to raise some questions. So while we have now received um, a first insight um, from a broader perspective from Lorenzo, what we will now hear, uh, we will now direct our interest into a more specific topic, namely uh, into the woodworking industries. Our next speaker, Karl-Heinz Scholz uh, from S&P Management Consultants, will put the focus of his speech on the development and opportunities of digital printing in the finishing industry with regards to the woodworking industry. So we will hear something about the market itself, the users, the challenges, and last but not least, obviously, the to-dos the digital printing industry will have to do. So, Philip, please go ahead. <laughs> Yes, we are looking forward to our next speaker for the market overview and we would like to welcome Karl-Heinz Scholz. He, is a manage he works at S&P Management Consultants and he is dealing with flooring, wood materials, interior fitters. He is dealing with market development, that's one of his specialist fields. And he holds several important patterns, especially in the interior construction area. He also works for renewable and sustainable resources. So we are looking forward to his speech. So thank you very much, Karl-Heinz. 
Hallo, mein Name ist Karl-Heinz Scholz, mein Name ist Karl -Heinz Scholz von Scholz and Partner Consulting. We work in the interior fittings industry and flooring industry and today I would like to tell you something about, about industrial direct printing in our industry which has taken root in the past couple of years and which is used for interior fittings such as walling and ceiling systems, floor coverings, furniture fronts, but also for special applications and facade construction like for example digitally printed, weather resistant and non-inflammable facade panels for curtain wall facades. There is another industry that has become increasingly important for direct printing, the ceramics industry. Um, that is the tile manufacturing where digital printing has been used longer than in interior fitting. They have excellent experience and more than 10,000 installed printing plants globally, which are functioning in a very efficient and economic way. What has changed in the past years so that a method such as the digital direct printing could be established on the market? Well, first there were new demands regarding the response periods. Architects, builders, planners have less time to deliver on their clients' needs, which in turn means less time for craftsmen and interior fittings. So they used to have more time for delivering these same services. So time pressure has increased. A different factor is that the demand for shorter delivery periods comes with economic aspects too. And there's also factors such as in the retail industry or in uh, restaurant chains that major market leaders such as McDonald's or Starbucks have realized that if their clients have to wait for their shops to be renovated, if they cannot visit them, that after three days already the clients would change their behavior and then they would go to different restaurant chains and obviously go to the competition and then these McDonald's would lose them as a client. So they decided to shorten reaction periods. They cannot close their shops too long that won't function. Another factor is the increased pressure by the businesses who are aiming to increase the variety in available decors. In the past, decors used to be the concern of analog printers. They knew what to do. One could choose from a range of designs, but not in an entirely free way. So new demands evolved here. And through the Di digital direct printing, this is delivering on them perfectly. There's an additional trend towards more and more individual CI and CD concepts. And this impacts on the requirements posed on interior fittings. Businesses and clients didn't want existing things anymore, but their own thing. But creating one's very own thing only works, works through specialization, of course. All of these developments eventually led to increased flexibility and economic efficiency, meaning that in production we were now able to produce the materials with our own decors at short notice. We were not, we not didn't depend on long delivery times of suppliers anymore. They would need five, six, seven, eight weeks. Today in the digital direct printing businesses we make decisions and one hour later we're able to print them. And of course all of this has brought about major changes. Another thing that has disappeared is changing collections for all those in interior fittings and those working with decors. This used to be extremely expensive. We would have to deal with residue that had to be disposed and after a couple of years. A costly thing which has disappeared completely with the rise of digital direct printing as we are now printing exactly and only what we need. Of course, storage risks have decreased too as nothing needs to be stored for years, which could be needed sometime, but then is damaged or lost, um, which fades in quality. All of this is not a problem anymore. And we have also ticked another box in case of loss, theft, damage or faults during processing of specific materials. We are now able to replace them relatively fast. Because if a wall panel is missing or a ceiling panel, which is a specific part of the decor, we need to replace exactly this part. And in the past, this just didn't work out. So now we can deliver on many of the unique customer requests up to batch size one which simply wasn't possible in the past.
Digital Printing is the decathlon of industrial service, surface design. I like this metaphor because it demonstrates how this is not simply a combination of printing and some lacquer and its processing, but this is about many disciplines that are perfectly intertwined for bringing about these results. And the system not only needs to function, but it needs to function in an economic way. So far, there aren't enough specialists for this. And of course, we are also lacking the training and education facilities uh, which we could turn to for headhunting. The businesses are currently left to themselves. Training on the job is the only way that we must make use of as long as there aren't any alternatives. A challenging combination of high-tech hardware and demanding software which must be handled in order for digital printing to bring about the results it is already offering. These results are most definitely just as good as those in the analog printing in the past. Some decors, I must mention this, can perhaps not be perfectly copied by the digital high-quality printing technologies, but these are really only a few exceptions. But what we can do, and this is very important in digital direct printing, on any possible material, stiff materials especially, all sorts of wood materials, aluminum composite boards, glass, ceramics, all sorts of plastics, mineral material surfaces, we are able to directly print on them. No need for intermediate steps like full laminate in order to create a suitable surface. Only perfectly synchronized systems bring about satisfying printing and surface, surface results, which is why turnkey solutions play a crucial role in this industry. Manufacturers must cooperate. The conveyor technology must match the surface preparation, the decor handling must match the coloring, and the ink reproducibility of the decor. The lacquer structures must perfectly match the surfaces. Every drop of ink reacts differently differently to a different material, and all of these factors need to be coordinated accordingly. The result must be a surface, including, for instance, a synchronous pore embossing with embossing rollers, or even a digital print result that represents that perfect picture which we know from the past when analog printing techniques were used. The digital structuring methods for surfaces that have entered the market, of course, offer major opportunities for creating surface structures and fields that weren't even possible in the past. Of course, there's a lot of work to do in this industry because all of this isn't simply purchasable, it comes at a price. Training of skilled labor must be a priority, which is why the deeper this organization, of which many businesses in this industry are members, deeper is it determined to launch corresponding training programs for educating machine operators, decor designers, and engineers. In this synergy, this decathlon of hardware and software components, these experts can bring about excellent results. Of course, the best practices from other industries need to be included, like, for example, the Thailand ceramics industry, where technologies were developed over five to ten years that can now realize perfect illusions of decors and original patterns in a way we would not have deemed possible a while ago. And that's working on a large scale, almost 10,000 installed facilities functioning perfectly and that should be the benchmark for DEPA and all of its member businesses for the future. Digital direct printing holds major opportunities, but they come, they come at a price. We must do something in return. I would like to call on all of you to engage in these opportunities, as they are the perfect chance for the future of surface development in interior fittings and on the facade. Thank you very much. Ja, auch dir vielen Dank, Karl -Heinz, Thank you very much, Karl-Heinz, for your insights and your opinions. Haben, very interesting. We, uh, you said that there's still a lot to do in, der, in, der in the woodworking um, industry and the wood processing industry. Hab, we also heard that this is not only about education of workforce, but it's also about availability of turnkey solutions. Thank you very much. We'll now look at the questions that have reached us for Mr. Villa and Karl-Heinz Scholz. 
haben wir hier eine Frage, There Stephanie, is auf one Englisch, question, äh, Stephanie. Villa. It's Möchtest in English for Mr. Villa. Can you take over? Yeah, I will do that. Um, just a short note for a translation um, for our translators. Um, we will not be translating the answer of Lorenzo. So, uh, uh, Lorenzo, I will put the question to you directly and please go ahead and then answer. Um, what I see came in as a question, and I know that Karl Heinz and both you you already mentioned the industry. What are the main reasons that let some industries, such as ceramics, to adopt inkjet technology so quickly, completely, and decisively? Um, if you would like to answer this, directed at you, Lorenzo. Okay, thanks, uh, Stephanie, for uh, for the question. Uh, I believe that there is uh, not just one reason. Um, first of all, from an organizational perspective, from a workflow perspective, in uh, certain sectors, such as ceramics, and uh, I believe even in the wooden surface uh, uh, finishing, all processes are uh, in line, and they all uh, run uh, at uh, constant speed with very, very few manual operations. From tile construction to tile packing and, uh, and the shipping, and the decoration itself has always been highly integrated in this uh, workflow. Uh, it requires to be integrated in a uh, in a process, as I mentioned, up upstream and downstream from the print engine. The second point is that in the ceramic sector, uh, there has always been, a, let me call it like this, a close conversation among all the players. I mean, the equipment manufacturers, the chemical manufacturers, the tile suppliers, to speed up this uh, uh, revolution. One of the drivers, uh, for example, and uh, it's quite unique, uh, was the rapid reduction in the price of colorants the inkjet colorants, I mean. Something that in all the other sectors of digital printing, such as the graphics, the packaging, all the others, the textile, happened progressively, based uh, on the increasing adoption of technology. Well, in the ceramics, it was uh, decided ju to just do it, bringing uh, the cost of the finished um, digital product of the printed uh, tile to the same level as a traditional product. Thank you very much, Lorenzo. Thanks, uh, and I believe that um, answer is sufficiently given by you. So I hope the audience is uh, fine with that. Thank you very much. So um, back to our translation. Uh, we will now start again. And I saw that uh, there are a couple of more questions coming in, Philip. And I think I see some that are more directed at Karl Heinz. Ja, genau. Karl Heinz, die nächste Frage, die würde ich gerne Karl Heinz, the next die question is for you. The question is, can you tell us roughly how much the introduction of digital printing and in interior fittings SME with 100 employees would cost? Of course, this always depends on the type of industry we are looking at. So, on average, one has to estimate and take into account that the digital printing four to five is at four to five million. This is more than just a digital printer. There's the pre-printing stage, the downstream, upstream processes. So um, with a good quality will cost five to six million. This has to be invested. And this also takes time because um, planning the plans takes six to eight months and then there's the delivery plan 
time, five to six million, two to three years, so that there will be high quality results at the end. Thank you very much for this insight, for this answer. There's another question. And this question does not relate to the cost, but to time. How fast, of course, under perfect circumstances, can digital printing be implemented on an industrial scale? How long does that take? Yes, like I already mentioned, I think this takes two to three years. And comparing this with a batch size one plant, the processes are different. There's the planning phase, then there's the starting phase within the business to test the installation and test the results. But this, this time needs to be considered two to three years in order for a plant like this um, to work industrially and in order to bring the results of the required quality. Okay. Thank you very much, Karl-Heinz. Thank you, Mr. Villa. And I hope that we will see you again in autumn this year at the Deeper Symposium. Thank you. Thank you, Ori, also for my side, obviously. And uh, now that Lorenzo Villa and Karl-Heinz Scholz have given us uh, an insight into the history and development of digital printing in various sectors, and we took a more specific dive into the woodworking industries. Uh, we will now dive into the practical part, let's say. And we will now talk to two representatives of digital printing users who are well known in the industry, um, Sebastian Wendel and Ali Özilmaz. So today they will provide a first insight into their experiences gained as quasi-pioneers in the woodworking industry in the field of digital printing. Their advantages um, and also some pain points and hurdles along the way that they experienced. So from their own perspectives, they will give us some insight into their companies. So Philip will now introduce you uh, to our next two speakers and uh, please feel free again to use our email address uh, deeper at media minus factory dot studio to raise any questions you have for the following two speakers. Philip. Vielen Dank, Stephanie. After we've heard of the developments and history of the digital printing and we've gained some insight with Karl Heinz in regards to the woodworking industry, now we want to take a look at the practical side of things. We have two interview partners which will give us an insight into their experiences. We would like to welcome Mr. Wendel from Klaasson. He is Head of Product Management and Design and Design Development at Klaasson Group. He has over 25 years of experience in the areas of sales, marketing, product development in the flooring industry. We want to also welcome Ali Uzimas. For 13 years now, he has been managing partner at MV Digital Print, and for over 20 years, he has been a manager at Reinhold Keller Interior Construction with over 400 employees. Mr. Wendel, let's get started. For Klassen, what were the reasons in order to get started with digital printing as a technology? In the flooring industry, we are confronted with a highly competitive environment. And for our customers, we want specific and quiz, quick solutions. Classroom Group is active around the world. We have a high demand for decor, decors in different regions and for different target groups. When we take a look at gravure, gravure printing and the technology of printers, we're not always happy with the turnaround time and customization. It is especially difficult to deal with the different colors and we want complete exclusiveness and that is only the case if we have our own decor cylinders set up. That requires a very long setup time and that doesn't really meet the ideas that our customers have. Over the last years, we have seen that the average batch sizes in our companies have always decreased. So that means that you also have non-moving merchandise and you then have non-sellers as well. So 
That's a lot of solutions that digital printing can offer in order to tackle these problems. Well, that sounds very promising. Thank you very much. So you mentioned different difficulties and challenges for Klassen. Could you maybe also mention which challenges Klassen was facing, where digital printing might provide a solution, especially decor customization. So if you get started with, digitiza with digitization, there's no turnkey solution. You can buy the different components, such as machines, ink, and software solutions, but you really need to set the path yourself. And, of course, this goes together with the surface design that you have, for example, melanin, melanine with laminates and polymers within the polymer sector. And then you also have the need for decor data. We need the staff for digital printing as well. So, to sum up, what was Klassen hoping to achieve with digital printing and what was the potential? The most important thing was the independence when designing the decor. And for our customers, customers, we wanted to create quick and individual solutions. And we also wanted to tackle the problem of non-sellers. Ali, now I want to ask you a question. What was the reason for Reinhold Keller to take a look at digital printing? For us, it was really from necessity. You know, necessity is the mother of invention, and that was really the case for us. We really had the necessity. Reinhold Keller is a large interior fitter, and at the time, we were we, were, we had a lot of customers from the food service industry and hotel industry, and they wanted more and more customized products. And industry wasn't able to really provide such a degree of customization and also not at the right speed. And the demand from our customers was very high. And in order to fill, fulfill this demand, we had to come up with an idea. And back then, really from necessity, I thought that that might be an a possibility to create the products required. So from necessity. So that's really interesting that you had this necessity and a sort of desperation, and that's why you get, got started with digital printing. So Reinhold Keller, what role did they play and what challenges did you face? Well, it sounds very easy that we solved the problem in such a way. However, of course, there were many problems because with digital printing in our industry or for our industry, so that's not the industry that digital printing was really invented for. It was more about the advertising technology. So we really had to learn everything from scratch. The workflow, the scanning, the editing, the adhesion, surface treatment. There were no chipboards available on the market that could be printed digitally, so it was a difficult path. We had to develop everything ourselves. And there are no skilled employees that you could hire, because digital printing itself is really at home in the advertising industry. So we have developed this for many years, and then we actually founded MB Digital Printing, because before it was integrated within Reinhold Keller, but the demand and the advantages were clear, and that is why we created MB Digital Printing. And we can offer our products for all home builders. And what hopes did Reinhold Keller or MB Digital Print 
printing have for digital printing. Well, the hope was to really have the digital printing within the wooden furniture industry and to have a successful implementation. So the same advantages that we had within our company as an interior fitter, and we wanted to bring this to the market. So we wanted to show this to potential customers and, of course, be successful. And, of course, it took a long time, because if you're the only one on the market, many might say if you have something that no one else has, then that's an advantage. However, the disadvantage is that you are working the market on your own, and you need to make sure that you create a demand. So you need to convince people, because everything was running fine before as well. Customers had gotten used to things the way they were and they made things worse work in the best way possible so you say you have a solution for that problem and that was a very difficult task and that is why we had a great interest in actually having competitors in order to really so that our competitors would also spread the word about the advantages. However, our hope was to be successful, that the product would accept our market, uh, that the market would accept our product, and that is the case. We are very successful, we are growing, and we have a lot of new products that have been developed, and we have a very positive outlook to the future. Okay. Okay, back to you, Mr. Wendel. After implementing digital printing at Klassen, how did digital printing change and develop in your company? At Klassen, digital printing has grown. We got started eight years ago in Bayerwood with our plant. We have the largest laminate single production location worldwide. And we have a status where we can say that the digital printing department is the largest industri industrial digital printer in the world. So we are producing a substantial volume of our overall volume digitally, and we have been able to increase this volume steadily, and we are planning in this way as well. In Kaisersech, we also got started with the topic of digital printing. There we are producing polymer flooring, and we are working PVC free, so we aren't using any PVC products. So no foil, no decor foils, and we weren't able to buy those. And that was really the decisive point when we said we want 100% digital printing. So at Kaisersech, we have 100% digital printing. And that's how we started, and that's the way we're still working today. And we've been able to grow and our output is increasing year over year. We also created a design center at Kaisersech, where we have 100% our own developments for decors, so we have data available and can react accordingly. Mr. Wendel, if now you had to say what made you successful in the area of digital printing at Klassen, what would these factors be? Well, the most important thing is reproducing the entire workflow from the scanning from the raw material up to the final product, the surface design. So there's no ready-made solution. That's something that you need to really do yourselves. And that's something that we've done and, and took up a lot of time and, of course, also a lot of budget. And the most important thing was really continuing to work on this topic. You need to believe in yourself. And especially in Kaisers Ech, where there was no alternative that really motivated us to bring digital printing forward. And that really motivated us to implement it in such a way that today we can reap the rewards of our work. So the same question to you, Ali. How did digital printing 
develop a new company. As I already mentioned, at Reinhold Keller, it really started from necessity. For Reinhold Keller, we saw a lot of benefits. And also for our customers, of course, we saw a lot of benefits. And that was the reason why we actually founded MB Digital Print, in order to really bring these advantages to all other interior fitters on the market. We have done this for 12 years now. MB Digital Print exists for 12 years now. And we are growing. We have a lot of new products that were developed during the last 12 years and always from necessity. Of course, we have one big advantage. Our One of our customers is Reinhold Keller itself. And to have Reinhold Keller as a customer, they can tell us a lot of things because they know the market so well and they can really tell us the possible solutions for our developments at MB Digital Print. And that really led to some very versatile and interesting products that were really brought to us from the market. Okay, thank you very much. And which factors for you and the company were decisive in order to be successful? Well, the key to success for us was the customization which we were able to achieve. We are, of course, an interior fitter. We do. We are active in food service and the hotel, hotel industry, and customers want customized products. And up to today, the industry can't really offer this level of flexibility. At the time, we also had the right people at the right place, and we had a real persistence as Mr. Wendel also said, you need to be persistent, you need to have a lot of patience, a lot of commitment, you shouldn't despair, because sadly, up to today, there is no guideline how to reach your goals. So that's something that you need to really learn for yourselves. But we had the right people, we had the right customers and everything at the right time. So the next question is to you, Mr. Wendel, if we take a look at in the future, what are you hoping to see in the future? What would make your life easier? What could solve, solve problems? Well, there's a lot of different points, but one important point that we are seeing today is, of course, also due to our, is due to our size, it's um, very difficult to hire the right people because there's no um, job description that we can really use. We use gravure printing or offset printing as terms to advertise jobs available. However, people often don't know enough about color management, pre-printing, steps. So I hope that there would be a job description with the right training so for digital printing and really take an in-depth look in digital printing so that they get training for the entire workflow so that you can get the right staff for digital printing. So that's one important point. And then the second point is, and that's something that's been mentioned before today, we don't have any turnkey solutions. With the wood materials industry, it often it is often because the substrates and surfaces are different and the offer the companies offering the printing part of it, um, they just provide tools, but you really need to work very hard for your success. So I would really hope for some empathy from these companies that they would also look at the substrates and the surfaces and then offer the technology necessary and technology that can work straight away, that you can implement quickly. And that's also the success model that we can see in ceramics because their digital printing is 
really established by over 90 percent, and that's because we only have one material, and the different providers have really focused on it, and they wanted to actually provide turnkey solutions, so in the ceramics industry you could get started from day one and be successful. Thank you very much. Ali, now the last question to you. What would you wish for in digital printing? Well, the same points that Mr. Wendel also mentioned, 100% agree with him. In the area of digital printing, we are facing the same problems. And one thing that I might want to add, one thing that is our biggest issue, and Mr. Fender and other companies, other pioneers would pro probably agree with me, is the, it's a technical matter, but I do want to mention it, it's the, it's, it's identical color, so color management. With digital printing from one production to the next, we need to ensure identical colors and that is very difficult. So the term is color management, but it goes much further. And that was the reason why I really joined Deeper as well, in order to have an influence there as well, so that digital printer manufacturers can create tools so that we can have the same decors in weekly production without having to really take measures individually. So we want a more technical approach. Right now, the way it works is our staff in the pre-printing process really, of course, they have technological tools, but they use their eyesight. And we would like to have a more, we would like to have technology taking over this part of the work. So we would like the machine to correct the colors so that we can act faster. So the advantage of digital printing is really creating a lot of output. However, in practice, every time we need to adapt the colors. So that's one of our biggest problems. It's our biggest problem at the moment. And another point is professional training. So the for the entire workflow, but also for the maintenance of the machines. So if a machine needs to be repaired and so on, if the plant is down, then as you can imagine, that is a huge problem. And if we would have people on site that would be able to repair the machine, then of course that would be a great advantage. Because you don't immediately get someone from outside to fix your machine. So those are the main problems. And I would like to emphasize further training, professional training for our employees, color management, and making that easier. So to really make the decors faster as well. That's what I would hope for. Well, thank you very much for this very interesting insight. Those were two different points of view, two different points of view, different challenges and hopes for the future. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much from me as well, and I wish us all a lot of success with Deepa. See you soon. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you for the invitation. That was very interesting. And for the future, I also hope that we coordinate ourselves within the digital printing industry and we keep learning something, and that's very interesting. Thank you. Thank you also from my side, um, Sebastian and Ali, um, for this uh, for those individual views and for the insights you just presented uh, within our interview. So it was very valuable learning about your experiences that you made and the development companies using digital printing, um, like firsthand. So I assume for our audience, it's very interesting to learn that firsthand from you. And obviously, even for those um, who are thinking about maybe following your lead uh, at this time, or who are on the brink of uh, deciding that they're trying to use or uh, uh, implementing the technology of digital printing. 
So as we heard in the last minutes, um, there is still some room for optimization uh, together with the multiple uh, players along the workflow. And one main goal, obviously, Deepa is aiming to achieve with its network. So in the last minute, again, we gave our audience, you out there, uh, the possibility to raise questions because both of our speakers are live available for Q&A now. And uh, I think from what I saw on my screen, uh, we have received a couple of questions. Again, we might not be able to answer them all today, but uh, I think Philip has taken up a couple of questions that we will put forward to you, Ali and Sebastian. Philip. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Stephanie has just mentioned it. There are many, many questions that have reached us. We don't have the time to answer all of them, but I would like to ask two or three of them. The first question is for both of you. What are further potentials of the digital printing in the future? Mr. Wendel, please start. The digital decor printing is already at a very high level, but still there is major potential in the future in digital surface structuring. There are technologies already today, but these are developing slowly and they are, um, they are expensive when it comes to producing the structuring uh, materials. And looking at our suppliers, um, there, there is still a lot of potential in the digital surface technology. At Klassen, we have already started this process and we see major opportunities in the future. And this is one focus, one thing that we'll focus on in the future. Ali, would you like to add anything? I'm sorry. The digital printing comes with a, with a lot of potential. It is, I think it is hard for me to summarize this potential in a, only a few words, but um, in short, the potential is creativity and individuality. Anyone working in digital printing can use, can make use of his or her own potential. And this holds really a potential to, to get very, very far. Every single individual can be creative, and that's the good thing about digital printing, this individual potential. Thank you very much. Another question for Mr. Wendel. Is digital printing more expensive than traditional printing technologies? Mr. Wendel, do you have a general answer to this question? I don't think that there's one general answer. This really depends on different things. On the one hand, this depends on the printing substrates, on the ink, on the software used. These things play a major role for the costs, of course, because there are different costs for pigments. There, um, uh, the software optimizes the printing process in a different way. And then there's, of course, the surface uh, processing. And this really influences the costs. And then this is about the product that you're producing. The more you're producing, you need more ink. And the, the lower the ink price becomes, of course, but generally, all of these points that I have already mentioned in the beginning, all of these apply. Digital printing um, is a major cost reducer in the, in the residues. There's more flexibility towards our clients for the uh, customized designs. And generally, it's difficult to state a general statement, but I think digital printing can be less expensive. I would like to thank you again for answering these questions, our audience questions, and in autumn we will see you at the Deeper Symposium. Thank you very much.
den letzten Teil, zu dem wir jetzt kommen, Part Our 3, last unser part, Preview, part wie Sie hören, wechsle ich einmal now. ins Deutsche, I would like to switch uh, um to mit German unserem Vorstand, dem DEPA-Vorstand zu diskutieren In order und to einige talk Fragen about the an diesen zu stellen. Dann ja, einmal nach questions. dem ersten Teil, dem Market Overview, den wir gehört now. haben von unseren Referenten in The first part was our Market Overview, Lorenzo Villa and Karl Heinz Scholz, dem zweiten Teil gerade eben mit Ali Özilmaz und Herrn Wendel. Möchten wir jetzt die Zeit nehmen, um mal einen Blick in die DEPA selbst zu werfen. Und zwar taking a look at the DEPA itself. Und zwar in unsere Ziele, unsere Aufgaben, die wir uns selbst gestellt haben, gemeinsam mit unseren Mitgliedern. Und da sind wir auch beim Thema, wir werden heute mit dem DEPA Vorstand sprechen, den wir live und zu Hause haben. Und wir werden heute mit dem DEPA Vorstand sprechen, den wir live und zu Hause haben. Und wir werden heute mit dem DEPA Vorstand sprechen, den wir live und zu Hause haben. Und wir werden heute mit dem DEPA Vorstand sprechen, den wir live und zu Hause haben. Und wir werden heute mit dem DEPA Vorstand sprechen, den wir live und zu Hause haben. Und wir werden heute mit dem DEPA Vorstand sprechen, den wir live und zu Hause haben. Und wir werden heute mit dem DEPA Vorstand sprechen, den wir live und zu Hause haben. Und wir werden heute mit dem DEPA Vorstand sprechen, den wir live und zu Hause haben. Und wir werden heute mit dem DEPA Vorstand sprechen, den wir live und zu Hause haben. Und wir werden heute mit dem DEPA in die Issues jeweiligen Ansätze of zu DEPA, the, Dazu the core concern. Yes, eine weitere Person. I would like um, to welcome another person Schawa. here on stage, René Chava. Thank der you René for being with us here today. René is the managing director of DEPA. Lassen Sie uns DEPA. jetzt gucken, um, wie wir gemeinsam mit dem Let Vorstand einmal etwas zu den Grundsätzen der DEPA ansprechen können. Take a look at how we can talk about the basic principles of DEPA together with the board members. Und noch mal der Letztlich bekannte And Hinweis, äh, den wir schon ein paar Mal gestellt haben. Like auch da ist es möglich, dass wir im Anschluss again, eine Q&A-Session machen. Also wenn Sie Fragen haben, wieder an die bekannte so E-Mail-Adresse e at deeper at, at, uh, um, e -Mail -Adress deeper at media factory at um, studio. Wir freuen uns jetzt uh, auf den zugeschalteten Vorstand. Herzlich willkommen an euch alle von meiner Seite. Und uh, wir kommen euch fast dazu. Willkommen zu allen Board. Ali, lass, lass, wir, wir beginnen mal direkt mit, mit dir. Welcome back Ali, on screen. Ähm, jetzt aber in with you. Nämlich, Welcome back on screen. Ähm, in deiner Eigenschaft als Präsident der DIPA bzw. als Vorstandsvorsitzender. You are ähm, the managing director so of the DIPA. In Q&A part. So as a start for the last ähm, Q&A part, the question to you: What is the DIPA? What does it represent and why was it founded in the first place? Ali? Sorry. Ali? Alles gut. Was ich mit der DIPA verbinde, ist The DIPA to me is making digital printing broadly accessible in the furniture industry. Um, with creating the DIPA, we could combine the leading businesses of the different areas of individual surface design. These groups of businesses engaged in digital printing for designing surfaces have come together for the first time in this association in order to find a common path in order to give their clients the opportunities to freely design surfaces. And this is a process that needs to be prepared well. And I think the DEPA is really the ideal leader for the future of these new opportunities. My vision is that in a couple of years, the furniture industry will use the digital printing for designing surfaces. And this will revolutionize anything that we know now. There will be a revolution. So um, the question about potentials, I would like to answer to that. Every single person has a potential to use this technology. There are infinite possibilities. And every single person will, will contribute individually. There will be fascinating new products through resulting from combining plant construction and digital printing, the furniture industry, high-end lacquer manufacturers and materials. The DEPA is the initial sparks for many new projects in the future. DEPA wants to contribute to making all of this possible. Thank you very much, Ali. Thank you for your input. Einmal zu dir, René. Noch mal herzlich willkommen auf der Bühne. René, welcome to the stage. René, nur um dich noch einmal kurz unseren Zuschauern vorzustellen. René, I would like to introduce you to our audience. You are managing director of the DEPA. You are working in an organizing structure in the day-to-day business. Our question to you. 
nicht der einzige Verband, der sich äh, mit dem Thema Digital Association beschäftigt. Könntest du uns vielleicht eine Antwort darauf geben oder einen kleinen Einblick darauf geben, inwieweit die DIPA sich ähm, von anderen Verbänden unterscheidet oder sich abhebt? Ja, sehr gerne. Other associations. Ja, wir yes, bei der DIPA verfolgen einen ganzheitlichen Ansatz the DIPA, für den Digitalprozess innerhalb des Sektors ähm, mit den Themen, die wir gerade gehört haben. Unsere Mitglieder sind Designer, Schwarz- und Lackhersteller, Maschinen- und Lackhersteller und auch sehr wichtig Softwarehersteller, Produzenten von Dekoren, Entwickler von Dekoren. Developers of Dekos, of course, and also distributors. Aus- und Fortbildung, haben wir gehört, ist die erste und wichtigste Herausforderung. Training and education is one of the main challenges and one of the focus tasks at DIPA. Des Weiteren ist es auch ein wichtiger Punkt über Aufklärung. Another main thing is raising awareness, raising awareness that we have opportunity to, to bring these opportunities of digital printing into the market and also raising awareness on the advantages compared to traditional processes. Every member can contribute with personal experiences and we at the DEEPA want to create a network, a digital and physical space um, in order to exchange knowledge and ideas. Thank you very much, Rene. The next dich, question um, for you, Ali. Are there specific requirements in industry-specific client needs for the digital printing? Because, um, so are there needs that are sind? different compared to the needs in other industries. Yes, of course. Our industry has specific requirements to digital products, floorings, wall coverings, for example. So the entire production process is very complex. And on the other hand, the surfaces must come with a long lifespan. The entire process must take this into account. So, And it's absolutely fundamental that all involved areas, starting with the design Design development, surface preparation, software preprint stage, the printing itself and the surface coating. They must complement each other and they must be compatible. And this is exactly where there are deficiencies. The DEPA has initiated um, cooperations and I'm convinced that this is one of the positive aspects of the DEPA. The members of DEPA um, already have created a network of specialists, of really skilled workers, and we can access this network and I'm convinced that this will be further expanded. So the DEPA members from user areas Soteco, Interprint, MB Digital Print and Lee and Co. will come up with requirements for the supplying industry. Thank you for this insight, Ali. Now, looking at it from the ink and lacquer manufacturers viewpoint, aber natürlich you eben as auch a als member of the board der, at DIPA, Lacke, but you are also an employee ja of Adla Lacke, und um, businesses um, bei uns im such actors and sieht das aus deiner Sicht aus? Plantag um, are Chemicals, also part of also DIPA. What is your opinion in the department chemicals when it comes to Bereich? ink and lacquer? What are the biggest challenges in this field? Mr. Pesseva, this was already mentioned. There are Adler Lacke, but there's also Technos and Plantag in the DIPA, and these are three very innovative businesses in the digital printing industry. There are two challenges. On the one hand, the raw materials market is in a difficult situation. There aren't only legal restrictions and increased shortages in raw materials, so access to raw materials materials is increasingly um, difficult. This applies to ink, the ink industry too. And this, of course, impacts on the costs. They increase. Then there are the requirements to digitally printed, to digitally printing. These are increasing. Digitally printed products are being used in very many different areas. And the surface um, 
Surface parts are, of course, very, very important. It's different if we talk about flooring or windows, about facade parts, or whether we talk about furniture. So, of course, there are different requirements in these different areas, and the synergy, the basing, the lacquer, these ink and lacquer primer and the top coat, these things have to work hand in hand perfectly. There are three lacquer manufacturers, but in the ink area, I think um, we will expand there further on. And I think there will be beautiful solutions for the digital printing industry. Thank you very much, Daniel. Another question for you, Andreas. We have now talked about the, the role, and Daniel has um, expanded on this the role of color and ink and lacquer in this entire process. But there's another part, the pre-press workflow. And this includes the color management, of course. This is a, an area represented by Colorgate and Avacatcam. Cruise 2. So the quality of the printed objects, are there different requirements to this pre -press? press workflow in compared to other industries hello from my side hello Hello, I'm happy to be here. Yes, of course, in the past years, um, a lot has developed here and a lot of know-how has evolved when it comes to pre-press, workflow, and securing the print quality for these two things this is, of course, very important. One challenge of our industry is to manage this complexity the different materials, the different processes, primer, ink, different lacquers, and this was already described before, there are different functions, and these need to be combined and managed, and so, for example, whether these technologies are used for a bathtub or for a different part in the house. So the pre-press process in the digital printing process, um, this all comes down to the software, the software that controls the printing quality. So before a printing folder, a printing, the print data reaches the printer, some things are very important. There is the decor creation, where do I take my decor from, do I make it myself? Or is this decor for a wooden structure for wood grain or a stone look? So that's the preparation of the printing, the profiling and preparing the surface, um, managing the coloring. There are color deviations need to be considered. And this is something that Ali mentioned. So all of these core themes make up the complexity of digital printing. The goal of DEEPA is to handle this, these complex processes and to sort of entangle them a little bit more and then make them accessible for the clients and raise awareness about them in the clients. And that's one of the founding principles of the DEEPA. The technologies of the digital print is more in the background, and the, this is more about creating your own surface. So that's the core message for this topic of pre-press. Thank you very much, Andreas, for your opinions and insights. Josef, now a question to you. We have now heard about this complexity of the process. And of course, there are many different parties involved in this workflow. So according to you, a major contractor, like, for example, one of our members, Chefla, Durst, Kabi, A, Homak or Himmen, for a major contractor like that, how do they handle this complexity in the entire process? 
gerne, Stefanie, aber erst einmal. Yes, of course. But first of all, I would like to tell you that this is a very, very nice event. Thank you very much. Thank you to Philip. Thank you, René. I am uh, delighted to, to be story, here. This is a great Deepa. event and it represents so, our great Deepa story. Many things have already mentioned. Complexity, complexity and this is also very complicated. And this is enhanced if people don't talk to each other. And um, all the parties within an entire process need to coordinate, need to cooperate. Deepa has realized this and those things mentioned, for example, by Karl Heinz and Lorenzo and Ali have mentioned them too. This can only be approached holistically. And in mechanical engineering, this is, of course, also part of the chain. Chemicals, lacquer, machine, softwares, all of these things need to be in synergy. A, and, and this is what Deeper is about, bringing them all together. If we can create standards, that's, and that's our intention, and we're, um, we're optimistic for creating these standards, Standards for digital printing or digitally created surfaces, this needs to become something that is considered normal. Complexity handled through standards for the different process steps. Ja, herzlichen Dank, Josef, Thank für deine you very much, ich Josef. Ich würde da ganz gerne noch mal bei dir bleiben. And I would like um, wir to haben jetzt einige Beispiele you. von Akteuren We have gehört, heard different die examples in den digitalen different parties involviert part sind. Of this um, und ich denke mal, es ist allen klar geworden and und unseren think Zuschauern und Zuhörern, now realized, um, wer für eine Mitgliedschaft in der DIPA tatsächlich in Frage kommt. Who is um, wir really haben bereits mehrere Mitglieder aus den verschiedensten Kompetenzbereichen in, the in den letzten Wochen und Monaten in uns there are many, many members of different competence areas in the DEPA, and Josef, you already said this, the network and the relationships are the basis of this network. And can you tell us something about that? How can a business become a DEPA member, and what does it mean to be a DEPA member? Das Wichtige, was du zum Schluss gesagt hast, Stephanie, the most important thing is what does it mean to be a deeper member? This is not an inactive association. This is about active participation, active expansion in digital printing. Every single association, of course, lives off and is based on the active participation of the members. And if somebody is actively participating in the DEPA, they, of course, gain something back from the members. And our circle, our network is so very fruitful um, for the other members. Everybody is benefiting. So I can only motivate everybody to take part in this. As a user of digital surfaces, for example, a carpenter want to, wants to use digital printing for surfaces, they can approach the DEPA. They can approach Ali, for example. Or another example, somebody interested in digital printing, asking themselves what they have to do. DEPA is really open to everybody, and one core, a core of this network is that we are honest with each other, but um, we need to focus on our goal, making digital printing accessible for everybody. How can you become a member? That's simple. Just write an email, visit our website, www.deepa-surface.com, visit the website. There's a, there are membership requests. And then you become a member, can become a member within a short time. And this is an interesting, very colorful uh, association. And the goal is individually shaped surfaces accessible to everybody. Thank you very much, Josef. Rede und Antwort Thank you to all of you who, as members of the board, were ready to answer all of your questions, all of, of course, all of these answers and all of these insights were only a brief abstract. However, this is only the deeper 
her previous episodes as a teaser for what is still to come. Vielen Dank an euch so thank you very much to um, all of you. It was very nice to see you, even if it was only on the screen. Thank you very much. I will now be switching back to English one last time when we are coming to a close of Deeper Preview. So looking at our schedule, um, I think we are right on time. Um, and thanks again. Um, I would just mention again what Josef just said um, in the end of his uh, little speech. Um, obviously, all of us, um, the board members on screen right now that you just saw and heard, uh, as well as Renee as the managing director, plus um, Philip and myself from the board of the DEPA management will be available to all of you. So any questions that remained unanswered today, please feel free to direct them at either one of us at any given time after the preview. So as Josef said, and he mentioned the DEPA uh, website already, so I will mention it again. It's deepa-surface.com. Uh, I would advise you all to really have a look at the website. It's recently established, but we filled it with even more content lately. So if you have any questions regarding our members that already are part of DEPA and you would like to find out more about their expertise, their area of expertise, or you want to find the right contact partner, um, just look at the website. You will sure to find them there. So what remains left to say? Um, actually, what remains for me to be said at the end of this preview is actually what we came here for. So uh, we would really uh, suggest to be very excited and very interested in what is to come, which is our deeper symposium. Um, we had, unfortunately, like so many other events, uh, we all know that, we had to reschedule that event. It was supposed to be a second deeper symposium already taken place, but obviously due to the COVID-19 situation at hand, we had to reschedule it. But it will be coming, and it will be coming up in September of this year. So late September, DEPA Symposium, mark the date, save the date in your minds. Um, yes, we are looking forward, and I hope to see everybody that took part today uh, in the DEPA Symposium in September again. So um, what is left? One more thing, maybe uh, when you're thinking about the DEPA Symposium late September, we are currently planning it in a digital format. Um, you all are aware, and I think uh, I don't have to put too many words to that, you all are aware about the planning security um, at hand right now. And again, so far we are planning it digital. If the situation will change and we will have the possibility to do so, obviously we will pull the switch and uh, do it hybrid, but that will remain to be seen. Um, Philip, uh, maybe um, something in German to end this deeper preview from your side. Ja, wie, wie Stephanie schon sagte, yes, zu guter Letzt möchten wir Sie noch mal heute neugierig und gespannt machen really like auf unser nächstes Event im DIPA Symposium Ende des in Jahres. Es wird das zweite Symposium in autumn of this dieser year. It will be the second symposium of this very young history in the young history und, of wie viele DIPA. Veranstaltungen aktuell and as many auch, other events, this symposium has already also been rescheduled. However, due to the current circumstances, it is not easy to find find any fixed dates and planning security is of course a big topic for us as well. So as of today we believe it will be a digital format, however if the circumstances allow we will have an hi a hybrid event. So last block stays with me. Um, again what I would like to say uh, to close this today's deeper preview is uh, stay tuned. That is the last thing I will say. Stay tuned for more and be excited and be interested in what is to come in the DEPA Symposium. We will publish the final day. It will take place end of September soon. So stay tuned. And in the meantime, um, yeah, let's take up what everybody else said in the last couple of, uh, well, in the last one and a half hours. Um, create bonds, create relationships and uh, create your own surface. Uh, actually, along the motto of DEPA, like uh, Joseph put it so nicely a couple of minutes ago. Thanks to all of you who participated today and made this happen. Um, obviously not only the crew on stage, but uh, we thank everybody who take, took part today. Um, the speakers, our interview partners and the board of DEPA. So thanks once again. It was a pleasure having you all here. And again, one last thing. 
buy from the stage. That's the last thing we're going to do. Um, buy from the Media Factory in Hanover. And we are really looking forward to see you again very soon. And by seeing you, I really actually mean seeing you. Because that is our utmost pleasure. And let's make sure that it does have some, uh, you know, it offers some fun to do it like this, but even more so, it offers a lot more fun to really see you in person, and we are very much looking forward to that. So bye from today, and see you soon. Bye-bye.